Something unprecedented is taking place at the top of the world, an unsettling phenomenon never before witnessed by humankind. Across the Arctic, massive craters are emerging in some of the planet's coldest and most remote regions. It began in the Yamal Peninsula of northern Russia, but similar formations are now appearing throughout the Arctic landscape, leaving scientists both astonished and alarmed. At first glance, these gaping voids appear to resemble ordinary sinkholes. Those sudden depressions in the ground are caused by water erosion or subsurface collapse, but these Arctic craters defy that explanation. Unlike sinkholes, which typically feature sunken centers and smooth rims, these craters possess elevated edges and scattered debris. Rocks and chunks of ice have been launched hundreds of meters from the blast zone, indicating a powerful force more akin to an explosion than a simple collapse. There is no evidence of meteorite impacts ruling out extraterrestrial causes. What scientists are left with is both fascinating and deeply troubling, a natural detonation from within the Earth itself. Upon closer examination of these craters, researchers made a chilling discovery. High concentrations of methane gas were detected in the air and water at the bottom. But this methane wasn't leaking from conventional natural gas reserves. Instead, it was being released from something far more ancient and volatile, something long entombed beneath the Arctic's frozen skin. The root of this mystery lies in the thawing of permafrost, vast stretches of ground that have remained frozen for tens of thousands of years. Permafrost isn't just frozen soil, it's Earth's cryogenic vault, preserving millennia-old remnants of life. Plants, animals and enormous stores of carbon. Spanning about a quarter of the Northern Hemisphere's land surface, permafrost blankets areas such as Siberia, Alaska and Northern Canada, regions within the Arctic Circle that have, until recently, served as stable ground. But climate change driven by human activity, burning fossil fuels, deforestation and rising global temperatures, is disrupting this fragile equilibrium. As the atmosphere warms, permafrost begins to thaw, and with it comes the release of methane, a greenhouse gas over 80 times more potent than carbon dioxide over a 20-year period. What's unfolding is the realization of a long-feared scenario, a feedback loop where warming leads to thawing, which releases methane, which in turn accelerates warming. Deep within the permafrost, ancient gases are building up pressure until the ground can no longer contain them. The result? Explosive bursts that rip open the tundra with terrifying force. Inside tunnels dug into the permafrost, such as Alaska's Fox Tunnel, scientists walk through corridors of suspended history. Frozen green plants preserved since the last ice age still hold their chlorophyll. Bones of woolly mammoths and steppe bison remain untouched by decay. These relics offer not just a glimpse into prehistoric life, but also a stark warning of what's being unleashed as the Arctic thaws. Though the permafrost may seem inert, it breathes. Each summer, its topmost layer, known as the active layer, thaws and then refreezes in winter. This natural rhythm has sustained Arctic ecosystems for thousands of years. Typically, the active layer is only 30 to 200 centimetres thick, but beneath it lies permafrost that can reach depths of over 1,500 metres, stretching far beyond isolated wilderness into the very foundations of northern towns and cities. Entire communities have built their lives atop this seemingly unshakable ground. In Alaska alone, nearly 170,000 people reside directly on permafrost. In Russia, entire cities like Yakutsk, home to hundreds of thousands, stand atop this frost-bound terrain. For indigenous peoples, such as the Inupiat, this isn't just geology. It's a deeply rooted relationship with the land. For generations, they have used this frozen ground to their advantage, carving out subterranean ice cellars to preserve whale meat and other vital food sources. It is a way of life forged in harmony with the frozen earth. But that relationship is now under unprecedented threat. Within the span of a single lifetime, the enduring stability of permafrost is vanishing. What was once thought to be a permanent feature of the Arctic landscape is now thawing at an accelerating pace, releasing not just water, but ancient secrets and looming dangers long locked beneath the surface. The massive craters of Russia's Yamal Peninsula were among the first stunning signs of this awakening, but they are far from the only ones. In northern Alaska, 
a frozen lake offers a more subtle yet equally alarming clue. Beneath its surface, stacked bubbles trapped in ice resemble frozen coins, silent evidence of methane rising from below. When researchers pierce these frozen bubbles and ignite them, they erupt into jets of flame shooting several feet into the air. It's not just a visual spectacle, it's a warning. Sonar scans of the lake bed reveal towering thaw chimneys, vertical tunnels of unfrozen earth stretching hundreds of feet deep. These openings create direct conduits through which ancient methane escapes to the surface. Chemical analysis confirms that this gas isn't just from recently thawed organic material. Much of it is fossil methane sealed beneath the permafrost for millions of years until now. The numbers are staggering. Scientists estimate that approximately 1.3 trillion tonnes of methane lie beneath the Arctic, a figure nearly 250 times greater than the total methane currently in Earth's atmosphere. As the permafrost thaws, it develops a complex network of cracks, voids and channels, highways for greenhouse gases that had long been safely buried to now surge skyward. Yet, despite the magnitude of this threat, many current climate models fail to fully account for this unfolding development. This oversight introduces a dangerous blind spot in projections of future climate scenarios. Across the Arctic, average temperatures have risen by over 3 degrees Celsius in just a few decades, more than twice the global average. Some regions are warming so rapidly that thaw rates expected by century's end are already being recorded today. Since the mid-1970s, permafrost melt rates have doubled in certain areas. The violent explosions that created the Yamal craters mark the most dramatic consequences of this thaw. In these events, pressure from trapped gases builds up until it violently ruptures the ground in massive blowouts. Since 2014, scientists have documented at least eight of these craters, each forming during unusually warm periods. Permafrost holds an astonishing one. 500 billion metric tons of carbon, nearly double the amount currently circulating in Earth's atmosphere. To put this in perspective, all of humanity's carbon emissions since the onset of the industrial era, total approximately 410 billion metric tons. This ancient carbon reserve, now at risk of being unleashed, is more than triple that amount. The reason for such vast carbon storage lies in the unique environmental dynamics of the Arctic. In temperate and tropical regions, dead plants and animals decompose rapidly, returning carbon to the air. But in the polar north, the intense cold halts this natural decay. Before microbes can complete the decomposition process, freezing temperatures preserve organic matter in the soil. Over thousands of years, this repeating cycle buried immense quantities of partially decomposed material under the permafrost. However, as global temperatures climb, this once stable carbon vault is beginning to crack open. Thawing ground reactivates dormant microbes, which immediately resume breaking down the ancient organic matter. In oxygen-rich conditions, they emit carbon dioxide. In water-saturated environments like wetlands and thaw lakes, the result is methane, a greenhouse gas far more potent in the short term. What was once a carbon sink, an area that absorbs more carbon than it emits, is rapidly transforming into a major source of greenhouse gases. Recent measurements from northern Alaska show a startling increase of more than 70% in carbon dioxide emissions since the mid-1970s. Current data suggests that permafrost zones are now releasing between 300 and 600 million metric tons of carbon annually. Unlike fossil fuel emissions, this release cannot be capped, regulated or reversed. Once the thaw begins, it can continue for centuries. This unfolding crisis may already be skewing climate projections. Many global carbon budgets and climate models have yet to fully incorporate the scale and longevity of permafrost carbon emissions, meaning humanity may be underestimating the speed and severity of climate change. What makes this situation particularly alarming is the runaway nature of what's known as the permafrost carbon feedback loop. As Earth warms, permafrost thaws, releasing more methane and carbon dioxide, which then trap even more heat in the atmosphere. That additional heat causes further thawing, intensifying the cycle. 
Methane's role in this loop is especially dangerous. It is roughly 25 times more effective at trapping heat than carbon dioxide over a century and 84 times more potent over a 20-year period. Although methane lingers in the atmosphere for a shorter time than CO2, its impact during that window is devastating. This feedback isn't just theoretical, it's transforming the Arctic landscape before scientists' eyes. As frozen ground collapses in a phenomenon called thermocast, the land sinks, forming ponds and lakes. These dark-surfaced water bodies absorb more solar energy than the surrounding tundra, accelerating the thawing of permafrost both beneath and around them. A haunting example of this chain reaction can be found in Batagaika, Siberia. In the 1960s, a narrow strip of forest was cleared to build a simple road. The exposed ground began to thaw, triggering the collapse of the underlying permafrost. The resulting slump dragged more trees into the pit, exposing more frozen ground. What began as a minor land disturbance has since evolved into a massive gash in the earth, a stark monument to a feedback loop gaining momentum. What began as a seemingly minor disturbance caused by human activity has evolved into a vast and expanding crater, nearly 300 feet deep and half a mile across, with no signs of slowing down. Scientists are now working urgently to account for the compounding effects of permafrost thaw in climate models. Projections suggest that by the end of this century, emissions from thawing permafrost alone could rival those of a major industrialized nation. Some estimates warn that these emissions could consume 25% to 40% of the world's remaining carbon budget to keep global warming under the 2 degrees Celsius threshold. In scientific terms, this trend points towards a tipping point, a stage at which these processes become self-perpetuating, regardless of future human intervention. It took tens of thousands of years for thick layers of ice and organic material to become locked into the ground. Now, with rising global temperatures, that ancient ice is rapidly disappearing. Restoring it would require timescales far beyond human reach. For humanity, this marks an irreversible shift. While the broader threat of permafrost thaw centers on the global release of greenhouse gases, Arctic communities are already grappling with the immediate consequences beneath their feet. In regions that have long relied on the frozen ground as a stable foundation, that reliability is vanishing. Infrastructure is buckling under the strain. Homes supported by wooden stilts are tilting as the earth subsides unevenly. Roads fracture and warp, and water and sewage systems burst as the ground shifts. In Russian cities such as Norilsk, nearly 60% of buildings are now exhibiting structural damage linked to thawing permafrost. But the fallout extends well beyond physical infrastructure. Indigenous communities which have thrived for generations across these northern territories face existential threats to their culture and way of life. Along Arctic coastlines, the dual forces of melting sea ice and thawing ground have dramatically hastened erosion. Villages once protected by a barrier of frozen earth now find their land disintegrating into the sea. In parts of Alaska, the rate of shoreline retreat has surged from a few feet each year to over 50 feet annually. At least a dozen native communities are now planning full or partial relocations, a process that is not only expensive, but also deeply traumatic on a cultural level. The economic consequences are staggering. Damage to infrastructure in Alaska alone could surpass $30 billion by 2050. Across the broader Arctic region, that cost could climb to $300 billion. Yet the loss is not only financial. As permafrost thaws, it releases more than carbon. It also unveils remnants of ancient worlds, many of which have been entombed for millennia. In Siberia, the ground regularly yields the bodies of woolly mammoths, still clad in flesh and fur, astonishingly preserved. But not everything emerging from the thaw is benign. Some relics could pose a danger far greater than imagined. In 2016, on the Yarmul Peninsula, home to those enigmatic craters, a deadly anthrax outbreak occurred. A 75-year-old reindeer carcass, long frozen in the permafrost, thawed during an unusually hot summer, releasing anthrax spores that sickened dozens and claimed the life of a child. Permafrost's unique conditions, cold, dark and oxygen-free, make it an ideal environment for preserving microbes and viruses, some of which may date back to prehistoric pandemics. The implications are chilling. 
Many of these microorganisms predate human settlement in the region, meaning immune systems have never encountered them. In controlled lab settings, scientists have already revived ancient microbes, including a 48,000-year-old virus from Siberia, the oldest ever reanimated. These findings confirm that such organisms can survive in a dormant state for tens of thousands of years, only to awaken when conditions change. The thawing Arctic is not just a climate issue, it is fast becoming a frontier of potential public health crises. Humanity now faces a pivotal moment in the unfolding story of permafrost. Although uncertainties remain about the exact speed and extent of its thaw, scientists are united in their warning. The window to alter the trajectory is rapidly closing. Current models estimate that, without aggressive cuts in greenhouse gas emissions, up to 70% of near-surface permafrost could vanish by the year 2100. The difference between a future of drastic loss and one of partial preservation lies heavily in the choices societies make today. In scenarios where emissions continue to climb unchecked, the degradation of permafrost accelerates sharply, amplifying the risks not just for the Arctic, but for the global climate. However, if global emissions reach their peak soon and then decline steeply, substantial portions of this ancient frozen ground could remain intact. The outcome hinges not on forces within the tundra itself, but on decisions made in distant cities, boardrooms and government halls. Preserving permafrost offers more than environmental stability, it buys precious time. Time for vulnerable communities to adapt, for ecosystems to adjust and for researchers to pursue innovative mitigation strategies. In contrast, continuing along the path of high emissions risks triggering feedback loops where thawing permafrost releases vast quantities of greenhouse gases, driving even more warming in a cycle beyond human control. Beneath this frozen terrain lies an archive of Earth's climatic past, now awakening and perhaps warning. The signals are clear, but whether the world will heed them remains to be seen. What unfolds next will be determined not by the Arctic alone, but by collective human resolve and the urgency with which action is taken. If you found this video informative or eye-opening, don't forget to like, share it with others who need to hear this message, and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the science shaping our future. Together, we can stay informed and inspired to make a difference.